As I've mentioned in other videos, modern personality psychologists have relied heavily upon factor analysis in their quest for the fundamental traits of personality. So what exactly is factor analysis? Well, as you can see on the screen, there are two general but related ways to think about this very popular and very complex statistical technique. Now, one, you can think about it as a dimension reduction technique, or two, you can think about it as an axis replacement technique. To see what this means, let's consider a sample of trait terms from Lou Goldberg's early study of the Big Five personality traits. Now he studied over 1,000 such terms and he used factor analysis with the hope that he could reduce these terms to a few common dimensions or perhaps common themes if you will. Now these common dimensions, he thought, would constitute the basic building blocks of personality or at least the basic building blocks of a viable trait theory of personality. Now to explain how factor analysis works, let's examine just two of the trait terms, organized and punctual. Now Goldberg asked nearly 200 students to rate how accurately they thought these terms applied to their personalities. And you can see here they used uh, nine point scales anchored by extremely inaccurate one up to nine extremely accurate. Now treating the ratings as variables, we can create a Cartesian coordinate space as shown here on the screen. Now here's the first person in the study. You can see that she rated herself high on organization and also high on the punctuality scale. And here's a second person. He's quite the opposite. He rated himself low on organization and low on punctuality. And here's a third person for comparison and she rated herself along the middle on both of the scales. Now finally here are 26 other individuals so we have 29 ratings total here. Now, as can be seen we have a fairly linear association between organization and punctuality. Persons who rated themselves as organized tended to rate themselves as punctual. And people who rated themselves as disorganized tended to rate themselves as not punctual. Now let's draw a new axis so that the line goes through the tip of the football shaped scatter plot of the data here. And we'll call this factor one. Now let's draw a second axis at a 90 degree angle to the first and we'll call it factor two. We now have a new set of axes that we can use to describe the same 29 data points. Now in terms of variation or differences in values along the original axes, notice how we have nearly equal amounts of variability. But also notice that the variability along the new axis, or factor one here, is much, much greater. You can think of it as the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The c squared, which is the longest of the line, is the green line here. Now if, as personality psychologists, we're attempting to explore individual differences, then the differences along that new green axis are greater, and therefore they might potentially be much more meaningful than the differences along the original axes. So this is the essential idea. We now have a new axis, factor one, that has much more variability along its continuum, or along its dimension, than the original axes. And the variability along factor one is also much, much greater than the variability along factor two. The scores just don't look all that different along the second new dimension. Perhaps then factor two is not important and we can ignore it or we can just discard it. So let's do so while also discarding the original axes. So here we're now left with a single dimension along which all 29 persons have been ordered. So to summarize, where did this dimension come from? Well, we reduced the organized and punctual variables to one dimension. So now we ask, what do organized and punctual have in common? What allowed us to put those together into one dimension? We refer to this process as labeling the new dimension or the factor. So here you can see we've labeled it as conscientiousness, one of the big five traits. So we now have one ruler representing what we think is a common fundamental trait of personality. Now in practice, this same process can be extended to more than two dimensions. Here we only worked with two variables, but in the world of mathematics, we can work with as many variables as we'd like. With 100 trait terms, for example, we could be working with a 100 dimensional space. That's something we can't visualize, but still the goal would be the same. Can I reduce the 100 trait terms to only a handful of common dimensions or themes using the factor analytic technology? Of course, advocates of the big five, they believe that the openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism factors are indeed the fundamental traits of personality. Now the two final points I'd like to make. First, the data plotted here in this graph fail to show a strong linear association between organization and punctuality. 
Now, the variability along the first and second factors is therefore highly similar. And with these types of data, there's not strong evidence then for a common underlying trait. So here we'd consider the factor analysis to be a failure. It didn't do what it was supposed to do. And that is allow us to reduce the two trait terms to one. Secondly, in many published papers, you're going to encounter a figure such as this. Now it represents a factor model. And as you can see, the conscientiousness factor is referred to as a latent variable and we draw it as an ellipse. Then the two original items are drawn as boxes and they're referred to as observed variables. And then lastly, the variability in factor two that we discarded or threw away, that's generically referred to as error or measurement error. So be on the lookout for these types of figures when you're reading published papers. You'll now have a sense of what they mean. No matter how it is represented, however, conducting a factor analysis can be really tricky business because it is such a complex technique. You can take an entire course devoted to factor analysis and still feel like you have not really mastered the technique. But nonetheless, I hope that this brief presentation makes clear that the essence of factor analysis can be thought of as a dimension reduction or axis replacement technique. And I also hope that you can see why trait theorists have found it to be so valuable in their research.